Welcome to another RMS support tutorial. This video will discuss activity schedules in RMS. Now let's get started. The work activity schedule is the schedule used at the job site to forecast projected needed dates for submittals, materials, equipment, work crews, testing schedules, three phase inspections, and so on. An accurate schedule is critical to ensure effective construction management for both the contractor and the government. To help manage the time specified for the completion of a contract, a schedule is required per FAR Clause 52.236, TAC 15. If a schedule is not provided or the schedule changes are unacceptable, the contracting officer or ACO, AE, RE, must withhold progress payments per the same FAR clause. The project schedule represents the sequence and interdependencies of work and must accurately represent the intended work sequence. The contracting officer or ACO, AE, RE, will accept or reject a proposed schedule. Progress payments are calculated on actual progress compared to the schedule progress, percentage complete, and remaining duration recorded. Activity schedules are based on the pay activity's estimated start and finish dates. There are two types of activity schedules in RMS set up by the government. Imported using a NAS STEF file or manually entered. Activity actual dates should be logged using the QC daily report. To view the activity schedule, navigate to the Schedules tab and open the Activity Schedule module. Activities are grouped into five or six subsets depending on whether you are using a NAS or manually entering the schedule. All activities, which is comprehensive, not started, which means activities without actual start and actual finish dates, in progress, activities with actual start and no actual finish dates, not finished are activities with an actual start date and no actual finish date in progress and activities without an actual start date and actual finish dates not started. Finished are activities with actual start and actual finish dates. Critical is only visible when a NAS is used. The list of activities corresponding to any of the categories can be seen simply by clicking anywhere in the corresponding blue tiles. A filtered list of the categories selected will be displayed in the data grid below the tiles. Most schedule types are imported via the STEF file. For instructions on importing an STEF file, please see the link in the description box below. Actual start and finish dates entered in the scheduling software should match what was entered in the QC daily reports. If they do not match, the request for import can be rejected. Once the STEF file is approved for import, after importing, you can view the new schedule in the activity schedule module. For manual entries to the activity schedule, simply click the Scheduled Start and Finish Dates column and choose the appropriate dates for each activity. Dates in the data grid are read-only. The total float column is the difference between the early start and late finish dates. The status column displays the status of the activity, not started, in progress, and finished. The activity number and activity description come from the Pay Activities module. Note that the activity number here is the same as the activity ID in the Pay Activities module. This list can be exported to an Excel or PDF by clicking on the Export button. The search box can be used to help find a specific activity or date. In summary, we discussed the activity schedule and how it corresponds within RMS. As a reminder, activity schedules are based on the pay activities, estimated start and finish dates. Activity actual dates should be logged using the QC daily report module. If you experience any technical difficulties while attempting any of these steps, please contact the RMS support help desk by submitting a support ticket or by calling the help desk phone. Links to our contact information will be provided in the description of this video. We hope you found this video informative and thank you for watching.